Time for what? Time for what? Experience in college. Time for reinforcement. Time for liftoff! Welcome to College for All, where nothing is impossible unless you think it is impossible. It's college, impossible. college. It's impossible. My college scholarship. Yes, mom. College ran by real fast. You hung in with the best college. Touchdown! First time for everything. Well, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's do this thing. Genius, let's do this thing! Welcome to the show, everyone. Yes, we are here to enrich your lives. But today we have a special episode because we're going to really give you an opportunity for you to take the initiative to enrich your life. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about enrichment programs. If you're like, what is she talking about? I'm talking about summer opportunities, internships, passion projects. I'm talking about Let's get outside of the classroom and let's show everyone what you really can do. But wait, 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 wait. It's not about me. It's always about the student. So once again, welcome to the show, Mia. Hi, Mia. Hi. So help us adults figure this out. When when we say enrichment programs, do you go like, duh, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I mean, I think I've been doing like enrichment programs for most of my life, whether it's like summer school or like camps, like either specific or just like sports camps. That's what I always think of like enrichment programs, something that you do in your free time that's going to help you get better or where you want to be. Yeah. And I think that's really kind of sums it up. Now, if you go on and start up your common app application, it'll be listed as activities. If you're applying to some public universities, they'll list it up like, like you just said, volunteer, um, extracurricular. But the reason why I felt like I always talk about enrich life because it's all about enriching you. It's not about the resume. Well, yeah, it does help the resume, but it's about <laughs> even if you do something you don't like, you learn from it. Um, Mia, yeah. what would you say has helped you more about deciding your next steps in your future path of study and career? What do you say? This is the classroom or the things you've done hands-on outside of the classroom? Oh, definitely hands-on. Like when in the classroom, you're doing what the teacher wants you to do. But when you're able to sign up for enrichment programs, you can choose whatever variety of a topic that you are interested in. And that's always going to be, I guess I wouldn't say funner because that's not a word, but like more fun and more entertaining and you really get to do what you want to do. No, yeah. I mean, and hey, granted, teachers, you're doing a lot, but it's hard to be an entertainer. But I do remember there was a chemistry professor at UC Berkeley. Yes, I did crash a UC Berkeley class with 30 students. I'm I'm, I'm a pro at this now. And uh, the students and I were blown away. He seemed like a magician doing all these chemistry (laughs) experiments live. But if you're not getting that live interaction, you could do it at home. A lot of you may have heard me said like, hey, engineers, I've had students take apart a microwave oven and put it back together. I've had students who want to be writers and they create these blogs at home or people who are community activists and just sweeping up their neighborhood or heck, I am too busy to breathe. I'm taking care of my family as well. And as an athlete, I don't know about you, Mia, but I didn't know back in the days when I was playing basketball, when I was tutoring all my teammates calculus on the side, that that could have been an extra activity. Did you know? Yeah. Right? Like there's a lot of stuff. Go ahead, Mia. Oh, I say every little thing you do counts. It just matters. It Someone. does. It does. It does. It does. Unless, you know, like it's gaming, unless you want like okay. the Guinness Book of Record of gaming. And then if you did win that record, you've, you're gaming too much, my friend. <laughs> you're gaming too much. All right. But I, I think, Mia, I don't know about you. I know some beautiful students and I don't know about your peer group that maybe need some more structure organized. Like they, they have amazing talents, but it's hard for them to invent these activities. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. hard. It's hard to just go look on YouTube for engineering projects to do sometimes. No, it's hard, right? Like, I mean, when I had one of my students who was fascinated with bio, like he says, oh yeah, I'm growing algae in my bedroom and trying to see if I can convert energy out. Of, I mean, like, what? What did you do? Uh, you know, but, but do know nothing's impossible once you think it's impossible, but there's actually more possibilities. So what me and I decided to do is we're going to mention some programs, a variety out there that are great enrichment programs to enrich yourself. So 
Get your pens, paper, your tablets, your devices ready and write these down. And both Mia and I will talk to you a little bit about it. So the first one, Mia, is the Bank of America Student Leadership Program. Uh, So this program is basically for anyone who wants to volunteer or wants to gain better leadership skills. I just applied. Um, But basically, the program is for today's leaders and just for people who have an ongoing commitment to like helping their community. Uh, If you get in, you basically will be assigned to a nonprofit and you get to work there as a paid internship. That's just an extra little thing. Um, And then in the middle of the summer, you and your other student leaders in your community go on a trip to D.C. and meet with other student leaders around the country that they have chosen and discuss problems today that all students have uh, and work together to just build a better community uh, in our own homes and just help each other build community. Yeah, Mia, did you know that at your high school, we had a student do this program and they were not prior involved in a lot of, lot of programs, but I t- told a student, I'm like, talk about how you always are that advocate on the sidelines. Do you know those people, uh, what mm-hmm. I'm talking about, Mia? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know why Mia definitely knows because she does it all the time. Uh, so, so, uh, and she was surprised she got it. She was actually one of the first people from your school to get it. Yeah, right. And then, yeah. So, if you definitely want to make an impact, it's a great opportunity. It's been around since two thousand four. And yes, um, you do meet with some wonderful people in D.C. making some magic happen. Yes. So leaders, just Google Bank of America student leader and there's a leadership program for you. What's next? Next is the Cosmos, which is basically a UC program that they have at UC Irvine. I think they have them at like this specific program at three other UCs. Yep. But the Irvine one is really cool because it focuses a lot on there's some genetic programs, a lot of bioengineering programs, which I enjoy. So that's the one that I will be applying to. And you basically, I believe this one is in person this year. So obviously, if you don't want to go in person, this will not be the one for you. But it's the four weeks at the residential and you basically just have to show a demonstrated interest in this and be willing to put in the work because it is a lot of researching and actually putting in the work. Uh, So I believe it's in UC Davis, Irvine, San Diego, and UC Santa Cruz. So if you're near there or any of those schools really interest you, I would suggest applying for these STEM programs. No, Cosmos is no joke. And every student who's done it has loved it. I would say it's the most diverse science program there is. And yeah, it is restricted to only California residents. And I do know we have an international base out there listening to our show. But think about college or university programs that are out there. Um, that been around for a while. Cosmos has been around since, I mean, when I started. And you guys, if you listen to my podcast, knows how old I am. Um, but just to give you an idea, um, computation machines, tissue and tumor biology, genes, aviation systems, so hard to find, but check out St. Louis University. They have some cool ones too. Bioengineering, that's the way of the future. So definitely um, check it out. Now, Mia, before we go to our next one, do you just apply just to Cosmos and it's like, okay, I'm done. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. You apply to everyone that interests you, in my opinion. You get yeah. what you get, honestly. Um, and the more you apply for it, the better chance that you have of getting to do something greater with summer or whatever it is. No, it's it's nice when you have choices. It's preparing you for college applications too, right? Because you're right, <laughs> you have to ask for a letter of recommendation. So, and to be honest, students goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what? You're forcing me to write your letter of recommendation earlier so I can get it done. <laughs> so for the educators or procrastinators, you're actually helping us. Except when you say it's due tomorrow. But, uh, but just show that magic smile. Mia, do you have a magic smile? Yeah. Yes, you do. She does. She has a smile that goes from ear to ear. So as long as you do that and then, you know, just keep them updated and show appreciation. That's all that people care about. But yeah, when you, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, I would tell everyone apply to three or four programs now because how limited, like, you know, um, with all these different restrictions or they only accepting, you know, like Cosmos, like California mm-hmm. residents only. I recommend five or six. No joke, people. Five or six. All right. What's next on the block? Next is the Kaiser Permanente Summer Youth Employment Program. Um, If you're looking to go into healthcare, this would be great. And it's not just Kaiser. I'm sure other 
hospital branches have these, but just asking for internships or programs where you can get the hands-on experience of being in the medical field and that they do like strive to help you and teach you about what you're going into or what you want to go into. Just trying to help you figure out if this is the career that you want to pursue in college. Yeah, the health industry is so amazing. You know, um, for those of you listeners know, I have four kids and one of them during the pandemic want to do a health program that's been around for a long time, but there's so many restrictions. So for you health people out there, hey, I want some hands on. I would apply to 10 different programs. Remember like the big hospitals here domestically, right? Kaiser, um, Sutter Health, like look for those big names, university hospitals as well too. But don't forget, there's also those clinics. Like, I don't know if you know here in San Francisco, Mia, you know, Mission Health Center, they used to have youth get trained and uh, teach other youth about how to have safe sex. Did you know? And for pay. I didn't know that. See, right. You never think that right down 16th street in the mission, mission health center. I mean, it's so hard to find even the entrance to be honest, but yeah, but those are paid experiences and what a better way to show, like I care about my community and health. So don't forget the small little clinics. Sometimes they may be a little bit easier, especially since we're in this middle of this pandemic. But we do also have some, you know, science is so broad, right? There's a reason why it's STEM, maybe STEAM out there. What about for those hardcore scientists out there, right? Uh, Yeah, that would be the summer science program. This is like in a really intense research program. They have three branches, astrophysics, biochemistry, and genomics. And it's basically, they fly you out to a college and you just research with alumni in your own group. It's really, really hard to get into. I will say I've heard like really hard to get into, but it will set you up for your future. And I believe this year they're going back to residential. I could be wrong, but uh, you really, this is the research program that you want to get into as a junior. I believe it is only for juniors and like some sophomores, but yeah, you basically just have a team of like your group of people on a specific thing and you research for, I think like three or four weeks a month, maybe. And you just have, you just research. I mean, that's what I could say. No. uh, And and one thing is Mia, did I know about this uh, summer science uh, program? No, I didn't. So the first thing, if you're a researcher, a lot of people just um, Google search some stuff. And the first thing Mia saw me do is I scrolled all the way to the bottom and what was the one thing I was looking for, Mia? Nonprofit. Yeah, if it's a nonprofit. So for, uh, for those of you looking for domestic programs here in the U.S., a nonprofit will have a code 501, excuse me, 501 um, parentheses C3. That's what's considered a nonprofit. Now, when they say that there is a science program that is on, let's say, UC Berkeley campus, well, it's just like me paying UC Berkeley $50,000 to rent their facilities. That doesn't mean... It is affiliated or associated with the program. So this program is uh, is affiliated with Harvey Mudd, one of the number one engineering programs in the U.S., MIT. Come on, people. Tony Stark. Yes, it is a fictional figure. But for since we're talking about entertainment and then the Big Bang Theory, Cal Institute of Technology, <laughs> Caltech as well. So you really want to make sure that um, they're legit. Um, the other thing is, Mia... I get a lot of times, uh, especially people from your uh, who are juniors who ask me, OK, but will this help me get into college? Will any of these programs guarantee that you'll get into college? Nothing can guarantee you getting into college other than yourself is what I think. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So it's a whole package deal. So, I mean, if you're going to a program, a lot of you guys probably got something in the mail. And if you didn't, don't take no harm. That just means you're they're not stealing your data science information online. But, you know, oh, I pay this national program, you know, $3,000. Look how good I look. Well, it has to be highly selective if it is a paid program, right? So uh, that's really important. Or if it's with high school or and college students, right? Like a lot of UCLA pro, um, summer session courses in UC Berkeley um, are easy to get if you have the money, but it's with college students. So that makes it legit. Or you just can demonstrate community impact. 
So those are the one of the three criteria that's really important to uh, making sure it's because there are some for profit programs like I know this one engineering program that's really cool and students like it. I think it's great. Like if you're a freshman to do it, if you're thinking about engineering, because a lot of students me, I don't know if you know this, I'll say, oh, you're interested in. 